Respiration is not the only way to handle all that energy-rich pyruvate. There's another pathway called fermentation. You've probably heard of fermentation before. It can produce many different products depending on how it is done. A lot of these products have important uses. The main difference between fermentation and anaerobic respiration is that fermentation does not use an electron transport chain. Instead, it actually uses the pyruvate itself as an electron carrier. When glucose is split during glycolysis, it yields ATP, pyruvate, NADH, and an H plus ion. When oxygen is present, or when there is an electron transport chain, all of these products go into the process of aerobic respiration. But when there is neither oxygen nor an electron transport chain, the cell makes an effort to recycle the NADH that was used in glycolysis. This resets the process, so glycolysis can take place again as long as more glucose is provided. Fermentation does this in an interesting way. In fermentation, the pyruvate itself oxidizes the NADH, restoring the NAD plus for the next round of glycolysis. Of course, there's no free lunch. The pyruvate is converted to a new product such as alcohol. This product may be useful to another organism, but the fermenting cell just excretes it as a waste product. The various types of fermentation are named after the waste products they produce. Alcohol fermentation produces ethyl alcohol, or ethanol. Humans have used alcohol fermentation for centuries in brewing and winemaking, and more recently you may have heard of people using ethanol as a fuel for cars. In these two diagrams here, we've got pyruvate on the left and ethanol alcohol on the right. You'll notice that the pyruvate has three carbon atoms, which are gray, and three oxygen atoms, which are red. If you count the oxygen and carbon in the ethanol, you'll see we've lost a carbon and two oxygens because alcohol fermentation also gives off CO2, or carbon dioxide. This is how, for example, the yeast in bread is able to make the bread rise. If you think there may be some biochemistry in your future, take a look at the change in the number of hydrogen atoms. Do you know what happened? Put your answer in the forum if you know. We're going to start out with some ordinary table sugar and stir it up in some water to use as food for an organism. The sugar looks kind of brownish. Um, that's just it's unrefined, so it's got some minerals added to it. You know, there's some debate whether this helps and how much, whether it's better for you or healthier, but um, essentially it's just sugar. Sugar is sugar. It's sucrose, as you saw in a previous lesson. Now in the water, some of that sucrose is hydrolyzing, but not a lot. Now we're going to take ordinary baker's yeast, also known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a kind of fungus that, that uses sugar for alcohol fermentation to create energy. So let's take the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that's yeast, and we're going to put two spoonfuls of this in our glass of sugar water, stir it up really good, and you can probably guess what's going to happen. We're going to cause anaerobic respiration, actually not anaerobic respiration, but fermentation. We're going to cause alcohol fermentation to take place and you'll see this in action. This is how people have been making bread, beer, and other things for centuries. So we're mixing it up. You can see those little glops left inside of the glass. Those aren't terribly important. That's just bits of yeast. Eventually it will all dissolve. After about 10 minutes or so you see these bubbles. They're like carbon dioxide bubbles because remember alcohol fermentation gives off CO2 and so basically we've seen fermentation in action if I clear away the foam you can see depending on the resolution of your camera some tiny little bubbles rising to the surface and breaking those are carbon dioxide bubbles and if you smell this there's a slight alcoholic smell because remember this respiration produces alcohol and carbon dioxide so once again, ordinary table sugar, it's sucrose, it gets broken down by enzymes into glucose, and from there you know what happens. Glycolysis takes place, and then fermentation in which the glucose gets converted into carbon dioxide and other compounds which release energy to form ATP for the yeast. So that's about all for this demonstration. I hope that gives you just a quick example of how alcohol fermentation takes place in real life. Remember the yeast? 
we get a lot of bubbles and that's how you get your fermentation to happen. Lactic acid fermentation, by contrast, does not release carbon dioxide. It is an important part of cheese making. Lactic acid fermentation also takes place in your muscle cells when oxygen is scarce. This happens when you are running or doing some other strenuous exercise. You know this is happening when you start breathing hard. Eventually your blood carries the built up lactic acid to your liver. The liver is able to convert lactic acid into pyruvate. Once you recover your breath, the pyruvate enters the mitochondria in the cells and the cycle of respiration is completed. Now it's worth noting that aerobic respiration provides 16 times as much ATP per glucose as fermentation. Another way of saying this is that fermentation requires 16 times as much glucose to produce the same amount of ATP. People who are trying to lose weight can theoretically burn 16 times as many calories doing the same activity if they get to the point where they're really breathing hard. There's a lot of evidence that intense exercise is a quicker way to burn calories and lose weight. Of course, the human body isn't that simple. Intense exercise has its own set of problems. Talk to a medical professional before you take up any kind of heavy exercise. This presentation is not medical or physical advice.